Okay, this is uh, the Alpharetta bathroom, another Alpharetta job. Um, on this particular one, we're going to take up the carpet that's on uh, bathroom floor, which is never a good idea in a bathroom to have carpet because it hides wood rot uh, from all the water from the tub and the shower and everything. Plus, it stains real easy, unlike tile. So we're going to take all this carpet up and tile that. Uh, in addition to this um, garden tub, we're going to leave the step here because they have children they need to be able to lean over give them a bath uh, so what we're going to do is kind of reconfigure the step a little bit and tile that as well as the face we're going to take that um, that fake marble off of there and tile up the face of it and tile the step and we're going to put a little backsplash of the same tile going all the way around um, with the trim on top also the top of the shower uh, I don't know why they did this but it's an open uh, at the top here and uh, theoretically I guess you know you put plants and candles and stuff which they're not doing so we're gonna take that wall and take it all the way up to the ceiling and um, you know make it an enclosed completely enclosed shower what they have currently is again builders grade 4x4 four four tile um, on here this house is probably a good 25 years old and the tiles held up you can tell there's a lot of areas where the grout, you know, has kind of popped out. All these little dark spots is where all the grout's kind of popped out over the years. Um, that's taken a while. Um, don't really notice that a whole lot. Usually when grout pops out in little areas like this is because it was too thin when it was mixed. You're not supposed to water the grout down. Uh, very much with the non-sanded grout and when it's too thin like that that's usually when it pops out it's kind of weak um, but other than that there's no damage the caulking in the corner was adhered to um, that's usually where you have issues where the wall separates from each other and you get a crack so that was good um, they've got a fake shower pan which is never a good idea in my opinion the shower pans not only do they stain you can tell the staining on this you know all the dark area around here but um, they do tend to crack and when you crack one of these there's no way to fix them um, so even though they're pretty easy to put in it's again a builders grade type of thing so they don't have to pour the pan um, there is some wood rot uh, again as I was mentioning earlier from the carpet being down here for so many years and people coming in and out of the shower. Um, there's definitely some wood rot going down here. They had linoleum on this floor before, so the linoleum is actually covering a lot of that wood rot that's going on. Got it really bad here in this corner, but that's not really too relevant because we're going to be taking all this stuff out anyway, and I'm going to repair uh, this portion of the floor where it's rotted out, um, make that new again. Uh, this corner is curved. Uh, it's got a 45 degree angle going in. And to maximize the shower, we're going to build this wall. Either we're going to build the wall out to the stair, to the edge of the stair here, um, just a little bit more, or we'll leave it there and try and match that line going across. Um, what I'd like to do is be able to build a, this wall to the stair right here. Um, because that line actually should come right about there on this uh, door trim. So we're going to stick some 2x4s here and kind of build the wall. Instead of at a 45, the 45 will be on the wall instead. And it will be straight out to here, which will match over here. And it's going to give probably a good extra foot at least, um, you know, depth on the shower. So that's about a foot. Um, that matters. Uh, that extra foot will make the shower much larger. And uh, we're not sure of the type of tile that we're going to be using on this, but we're going to take it all the way up to the ceiling. And um, that helps because the trim pieces going all the way around the ceiling like that you know, get pricey. They're usually 3 to $5 a lineal foot. And um, you know that can account for about sometimes $80 of trim just alone there. So. Um, in addition, we're going to try and take the tile right up to this uh, door jam, and that's going to save some money on the trim. Uh, when I say trim, I mean bullnose. So we'll have a couple pieces of bullnose there, and 
we'll have eight lineal feet of bullnose going up this wall. Um, and then, of course, I always put it in a niche. So the niche is going to go in the back wall here, and we'll frame that out with the bullnose as well. Um, so anyway, that cuts down on the cost a little bit. And um, we're going to go ahead and take the tile on the floor all the way into the toilet area. So this will be completely tiled. We'll put a transition right there in the closet. The transition will go on that front part as well. So um, there's some squeaking going on. Yeah, that, that uh, squeaking will go away once I put the dura rock on the floor and put the tile on. That'll be pretty solid. So that'll all go away. But um, this is day one. So we're going to do the tear out on this. And the uh, next video should be uh, doing the pan and uh, prepping the shower and putting the valve in and all that stuff. So there you are. Okay, so now we've um, we went ahead and poured the pan. Actually, I poured it yesterday, and um, it's relatively dry. I doubt that I'll be putting um, floor tile on today. I usually like it to be um, at least 48 hours. I know 24 hours is supposedly the time, but um, until it's all gray and everything, I know it's dry. I don't like to uh, put the floor tile down on the pan. Um, anyway, so um, this is all basically taken out. I've got the um, uh, insulation. This is a, a back wall to the house, so I'm going to reapply new insulation on these walls. Um, the niche is already put in, and we'll be sheetrocking around this whole area today. Um, of course, the shower valve is put in, and uh, new plumbing is done. There was some uh, wood floor rot, which we saw um, on the first video, and I went ahead and scab in some pieces of plywood actually it kind of transferred over to this side a little bit so I made that floor all nice and neat again I put some thin set down in between the cracks and everything and give it some more rigidity um, so basically we're ready to do the walls today oh I'm gonna fill that in as well um, so that will be studded out and and walled out so that you know we have a contiguous type of shower um, this wall right here, as I had alluded to in the first video, we're trying to make the shower as, as deep as possible from front to back. And the only way to do that was to kind of like fur out uh, some more studying to where this area ended up even with the door jam, which eventually we had tiled in as well. So I put some studying in here. Instead of having this angle going this way, it now goes straight out, and um, this will be the edge of the wall of the shower. Um, and it should work out pretty good. So we probably got uh, about eight or nine inches extra from where the old shower was to where the new shower is going to be, uh, minus the curb area. So it's about um, roughly four by four. It's about four feet going across and nearly four deep. I think it was three deep before, if I'm not mistaken. So we got some more room out of it. And um, I guess I'll uh, start this up again when all of this is done and the shower tile is put down. Okay, here we are on uh, day three, I'm sorry, four. And um, as you can tell, this step here used to just be a wooden step. It actually had carpet on it at one time, and so did the floor. So I took up the carpet, put down the Dura Rock, um, and that's all ready to go to be tiled. And for the for the step up here going to the tub, um, eventually it'll tile this also. I cut off um, the portion that was rounded on the edge here because um, I can't do round cuts with a tile saw. So I cut that off, put the, the boards on there, reconfigured that a little bit, made sure the distance here was good for the tile because it was actually off. It was, I don't know, maybe half an inch over here and then about a full inch over here. So. I had to reconfigure um, the structure of that a little bit. And then eventually I'll take off these, uh, um, this marble, fake marble, um, little backsplash here in the tile will envelop this whole area and go up and around and it will be um, a backsplash with the same tile. And the pan was poured and is dry, is cured for a couple of days, the curb is done, the red guard is all on the walls, um, in the mitts. Um, fixtures put in, everything's ready to tile. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, 
the framing that I always do on my niches. Um, I'm going to do that today. Put the tile on the inset, do it around the edge and everything like I always do. Let that set because all the field tile is going to get wrapped around it and everything, so that has to go first. Um, and that has to dry overnight. And then, of course, the floor tile, I'll put that in, and that has to dry overnight and grout it before I set the wall tile. So that's where we're at now, and I'm ready to get started. Okay, I messed out on doing the video from uh, pouring the shower pan and all that stuff, but um, I just skipped that. Uh, but so I'm done. Got the little strip there. 16 inch tile on the floor. The tile, well, this was carpet. The tile was on the step up there with a little trim around it, flush with the top of the tub, and a little trim around the backsplash. So that's done. Got a nice shower. And uh, it's almost 4x4 four four now. I think it was 4x3 before, so we managed to get it out. Remember that edge kind of went at a 45. Um, so that's straight now, and we've got edging on that. Nice new fixture. And of course, what I'm famous for is my niches. I always do the diamond, and I always put my floor tile up in the diamond. and. Um, that cut that and set it in there and then of course you know trim around it kind of frame it out and um, that's the floor so that's ready to go um, this goes into the walk-in closet and this goes into the toilet area but I locked the door anyway we continue to tile into the toilet area and set a new toilet and um, that's the end of this job it's all done